Hey everybody, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sydney and I am a radiographer. I do x-ray and CT. Today we're going to be talking about surgery. I believe that surgery is one of the most challenging tasks that a radiographer has and a lot of people are uncomfortable with it. So hopefully I can give you guys some tips and to make you feel more comfortable in the operating room. My first degree is in surgical technology. So I am very familiar with the OR suite, um, with the roles of the surgical technologist as well as the surgeon, the circulating nurse, the reps, um, and of course the radiographers. The circulating nurse is not sterile. He or she is responsible for taking care of the needs of everyone in the OR who is sterile and they are unable to grab things that they need because of their sterility. They have all of the medication for the patient ready. They prep the patient for surgery and I'm sure they have a ton of other tasks that I'm just not aware of. The surgical technologist is the one who assists the surgeon throughout the duration of the surgery. So they are the ones who get all of the instruments, organize it along their table. Their responsibility is to assist the surgeon throughout the surgery. Hi, Callie. Now, obviously there's the surgeon. So both the surgical technologist and the surgeon will be sterile through their procedure. Sometimes the surgeon has a PA or a nurse practitioner usually a PA though, with them to assist in surgery. So the surgeon, the surgical technologist, and anyone assisting in the surgery, such as a PA, will scrub in and don a sterile gown and gloves. And it's really important not to touch them with your C-arm. <laughs> there will also be Whoa. anesthesia at the head of the patient, um, obviously keeping them under so that they don't wake up during surgery. Anesthesia is not sterile. Now, the reason why I mentioned sterility, even though you're a radiographer, is because you have to manipulate what's called a C-arm around the sterile field. The C-arm is huge, it is heavy, it is difficult to maneuver, but they will expect you to maneuver it just as you would your portable for doing a chest x-ray. In addition to your C-arm, you have the monitor that connects to the C-arm so that the surgeon can actually see what you're taking pictures of. Usually, when I go in, if I don't know where my monitor needs to go, whether it's at the head of the bed or the foot of the bed, the rep or the PA will be able to tell you where your equipment needs to go. Setting up for surgery is the hardest part, I think. Once you have kind of gone through the motions, a couple of times in a case, then it's pretty smooth sailing from there. Going back to the sterile field, you as a radiographer are not sterile. Your C-arm is not sterile until they put a drape over it. Once your C-arm is sterile and the patient is draped in their sterile dressings, then you are able to approach the table with your C-arm when the surgeon tells you to. <laughs> Everything you do is based off of what the surgeon tells you. And I'm telling you right now, if the surgeon is wrong, but he's telling you he or she, if the surgeon is telling you how to manipulate your C-arm, but it's wrong, I just do what they tell me to do. Because if it's wrong, then it's on them. <laughs> However, if I do the opposite of what they say, they are more likely to get, be mad before they're like, oh, okay, yeah, she was right. So if they tell me that I need to bring my C-arm this way, but it really needs to go this way, I'm gonna go this way. And they'll be like, oh no, never mind. It needs to go the opposite way. Last thing about the sterile field, between a sterile and a non-sterile object, there's a 12 inch rule, so one foot. If you are non-sterile, you should not be within one foot of a sterile field. Now there are situations where things get a little gray with that rule, but when you're first starting out, just keep that in mind, that if something is draped in blue or sometimes green, stay a foot away from it. Now that you know a little bit about the sterile field and who all is going to be in the OR, we'll talk about the C-arm. 
the C arm is completely controlled by AEC, which is automatic exposure control. So you don't actually have to put in a technique. Now, the C arm's use is not for diagnostic imaging. So if there's a fracture, you can't use a C arm to diagnose a fracture. It uses fluoroscopy to guide a surgeon into the anatomy that he or she needs to be in. There are a lot of cases that you can use the C arm for. And my first trick into differentiating those and to remember what to do in each case is to use what I call is a surgeon's preference card, but that's from my surge tech days. So it's actually just a note card that you write, write down all of the tips from that surgery, what you need to remember, how it's performed, what you did in the surgery. So when you come in and you put the monitor at the head of the bed for this particular case and the surgeon likes the C arm to be as low as possible. Mm. Hi baby! Ah. Every surgeon will have a preference on how a surgery is performed and how you can help them. That means that some surgeons are more particular than others. And with the picky surgeons who might have a little bit of a temper management issue, I find that the best way to handle them is to not pay attention to their tone on how they're speaking to you. Just pay attention to the words and what they're saying to you and think of it as a teaching moment. <laughs> if you just remember what they like, then they have less and less to yell at you for. Does that make sense? Most of the surgeons that I've worked with are super friendly. They are willing to guide you to where you need to go. They are very patient with telling you how to fix your C-arm so that they get the image that they need and I haven't had many issues with surgeons in the past. I don't say any of that to scare you away from the OR. It's just getting used to things and remembering. Don't let your nerves get to you because once you psych yourself out in the OR, you will forget how to tie your shoe. And then of course they're gonna be frustrated with you because you're stumbling over everything that you're doing. If you're in a case like a hip or a spine, and you need to go from AP, so this is the top, this is the bottom of your C-arm, AP or PA, depending on how everything's oriented, to a lateral, so swinging it under the table. Sometimes you have to manipulate more of the C-arm, such as bringing the piston forward and back, or raising the C-arm up and down, because if you're as low as it goes, like some surgeons like, but then, you need to swing into a lateral. You need to raise your C-arm a little bit so that there's enough clearance underneath of the table for your C-arm to swoop under. This next tip is to help you with remembering what positions you're in so that you can easily go from an AP to a lateral and back without having to make minor adjustments each time you change from AP to lateral. I use tape to label on my C-arm and or on the floor what positions I need to be in. And unless you're really good with numbers and you can remember, okay, my lateral for this hip, your hips aren't gonna be a 90 degree lateral. It'll be more like a 70 degree lateral. But if you can't remember that, then write it down so that you can hit that lateral each time. When you are able to go exactly to the spot that they liked before, the exam will go so much smoother and the surgeon will appreciate you so much more than if you're having to make little adjustments every single time you go back and forth from AP to lateral. So really my two biggest tips were using surgeon's <laughs> preference cards in order to reference the exams that you've already performed so that you can remember what your surgeons liked and what they said and the orientation of the room on how it was so that you can replicate that for your next exam. The second tip was using tape 
to mark the positions that your sea arm is placed in so that you can consistently go back to the same position that worked well. Also, if the surgeon says to move north, he or she is saying to slide the entire base of the sea arm to the head of the bed. So the patient's head is always north, south would be to the feet. Some little other tips that I had is each time you go from an AP to a lateral, save the last image that you took. You don't actually have to send it through the, to the pack system, but at least you have it saved so that if they are finished with you, you can just be done and you don't have to go back to take another image. And another small tip is to make sure that you lock the base once you're in position because a lot of the surgeons and their PAs will lean up against the head of the C-arm while they're doing their surgery. Um, they don't want you to move because they, it's easier just to keep you there instead of having to wait for you to come in and out of position. But if they're leaning up against your C-arm, they have the potential to move it. So make sure that your base is locked every time you're in a good position. If they do end up shifting it at all, before you take an image, make sure to shift it back to where it was. Even though surgery might be intimidating at first, the more practice that you have at it, the more comfortable you'll get. And <laughs> things will go smoothly eventually. It's just like riding your bike and you fall off and you get scraped up, you get your feelings hurt because yeah, you're gonna probably suck at the beginning, <laughs> but you're gonna learn from it and you'll get better. Try not to stress out too much about it. And once you graduate, if you really don't want to do surgery ever again, you can always work at like an ortho clinic or an outpatient center or an urgent care and instead of the hospital. And you might get paid a little bit less, but you don't have to worry about surgery. If you truly hate it, there are ways to avoid it. Okay, it's time for me to make lunch. So. I think that my next video, as far as radiology goes, is to talk about my experience with pregnancy in radiology and how a pregnant radiographer can still work. Um, because whenever I was starting the program, I still wanted to have another child and I was kind of nervous about how everything worked out as far as being pregnant as a radiographer and I couldn't find any information online. Before I do that though, I might share... My show, nothing! <laughs> Before that video though, I might start to share our process with home building as my husband and I signed a contract to build our new home. I just think that it would be really fun to look back on. So yeah, lots of things to look forward to. So if you want to subscribe and hang out with me, then feel free to but I will see you guys next time. Thanks.